back, but good morning, Springs Church. Very good. Good morning to you on YouTube, watching us um, from wherever you are. If you are a regular attender of the Springs and you're on vacation or sick today, we miss you, we love you, and we're so glad you are tuning in. And I am so excited to see you all here this morning. It was cloudy. I'll be very honest. It was cloudy this morning, and I know cloudiness in Las Vegas equates to like a downpour of rain back in Tennessee. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if people are going to come to church today or if they're going to be like... Hmm, it's a cloudy day. I think I'll stay at home and take a nap. But I'm so excited to see you. My name is, yeah, give yourselves a hand for getting out of the house. Absolutely. I understand. I understand. The struggle is very real sometimes. I have got so many things going on up here this morning. Um, I lovingly and jokingly um, refer to myself often as a train wreck. So if I appear to be a train wreck this morning, go ahead and just forgive me. But I am very excited because I believe that God has an awesome message for our adults and our kids in here today, and I'm so, so happy to have our elementary students with us. Boys and girls, I did not have the privilege and opportunity to go to church when I was a little girl. Um, I went to church maybe two or three times in my childhood that I can remember um, on Easter. And all I remember was my frilly little dress, um, and I had gloves. I wish I had a picture of this. I had gloves and the white hat and, like, the big dress, like the tool, twirly, whatever that stuff is, dress. Come here, Chloe. Like, my friend Chloe here, imagine she has um, given herself some some body art today too. So this with gloves and a hat minus the, minus the tattoo. She's having a great morning and she loves you. And, and look what my girl Chloe has today. She has her Bible. Yeah. Good job, Chloe. There's your pen. Thank you. Go take notes today. Yes. Children, when you came in this morning, you were supposed to get a bright yellow fun note-taking sheet. Adults, if you want one for any reason. They're back there, and Miss Janny will hand you one. Miss Janny, I'm putting you on the spot. If any adults want one of these, she has them back there. Oh, look, some adults want them. Do you see these yellow sheets? Anyone? Oh, Christy's got it. Okay, see? Train wreck. Ready, set, go. Guys, I wore my shirt today, raising my tiny disciples. My disciples are not tiny anymore. If you're one of my children, come here for a moment. Uh oh. <laughs> ah, Miss Christie's got them. Raise your hand if you want a note. Miss Christie will give it to you. These are my not so tiny disciples anymore. They are approaching, we're approaching preteendom. Pray for us. And then um, this one will likely be swimming in the baptistry before service is over. So, but I am raising my disciples alongside Pastor Brian. Thank you guys. I love you. Go sit down. See, there's, here's, how we, here's how we do. Okay, bye. Um, he's like, no, never mind. Okay. Um, I, this morning I want to, oh, 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 oh I got to show you this too. I have another shirt. My mother-in-law loves me and got me this awesome shirt for Christmas because I am a boy mom and I live in Testosterone City, and this one says Raising Fishermen from Matthew 419. Isn't that a cool shirt? So we are teaching our boys and training them up in the way that they should go, and that does not mean that they are perfect. And if you have seen me around here being me and being real, you have seen me in my mama's dress. Some of you really saw my mama's dress last Sunday. I'm just being real. It's a real thing. Any other mamas and daddies experience mom and daddy's stress? Don't leave. Okay, yes. 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 Okay. So, I'm not alone. I heard that. No, I'm not alone. It's so good to not be alone. Okay. I'm going to go way back in time this morning. And the other day I was digging through some things that my mom had sent me with childhood pictures and things like that. And so I found this, my very own poster about me. Kids, do you still do these in school? Yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Okay. I know you cannot see this, but I was a fantastic artist. And so I have them up here. This is my family, my dad and my mom. My sister, who I gave blue eyes, she does not have blue eyes. 
my um, brother, it looks like it says brother, but that's okay, and then me, and I've got the yellow hair and the big brown eyes. I knew that I had <laughs> yellow hair and brown eyes. Okay, um, here is a picture. Let's see, this was grade, oh, I was nine, so what is that, third grade? Here, oh, check out the bangs. And if I cut my bangs right now, I would look like I was nine years old again. So, true story. Um, And I had, well, I still do have freckles, but I was super worried about my freckles. And during the summer, my freckles just like came out. But now I love them. I embrace them. Okay, I had some wishes. No, I did not. I'm just kidding. These are a few of my favorite things. Cats. We own no cats. We own dogs. Radio. Do you remember, guys, like the boom box? Like... (laughs) Yes! My children don't have a clue what a radio or a boombox is. And can we, just, can we just bring it down to the bottom? New kids on the block! Yes! Boy bands, even back then. Now look at my wishes. Let's go to the next one. I wish I could go to the new kids on the block concert, two ends, um, and I wish I could go to Florida, love Florida, and then the other one, you can't see it, it's cut off, it says, I wish I could go on a ship to Hawaii, I still wish for that one, <laughs> so, Pastor B and I will be celebrating 20 years in 2021, and I am really hoping to go on a ship to Hawaii, <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, now let's go to the next one. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. Notice I have yellow hair, brown eyes, some big old red lipstick. There is an apple on the front left-hand corner of that desk and a bag because Ashley's always got a bag. So I taught public school for nine years. I taught fifth graders. I was originally afraid of them. I love fifth graders. Anybody in fifth grade, like going into fifth grade this year? Yes! Fifth graders are just amazing. Their hormones are kind of still like right here. Like we enter sixth grade and it's just all over. It's all over. Okay, now the last thing is the funniest thing. Let's look at the last slide. Okay, these are things I do not like. Okay, I need you to look at the very top. It says Chinese food. And it was a great picture of a Chinese box with chopsticks. Guys, I mean, like, if Brian Mosley could eat one food for the rest of his life every day, it is Chinese food. He converted me. I now love Chinese food. And as you know, yeah, I mean, like, they're like, yes, for Chinese food. I'm sure we're going to have it for lunch after church today because we're talking about it. I always ask Brian, what do you want to eat? I, don't, I already know the answer. It's anything Asian. It can be Thai, Chinese, Japanese. He does not care. If it has rice noodles, chopsticks involved, yes, please. And I am now a Chinese food lover. I still do not like snakes, but I can actually look at them now. I used to not be able to even look at them in a book. If my children ever tell me they want a pet snake, it is a hard no and pass on that one. Not happening. We'll keep our fluffy little dogs. And notice the last thing that I did not like. Boys. And now I have four of them in my house. Okay. Now I know you guys are just eager beavers to see. Oh, look at her. She had bangs. My mama would curl my hair all the time. And hairspray. There was a lot of hairspray in that hair. Believe it or not, because in the South, it's humidity city. And I have six straight hair. And then I know that you guys, I was 11 pounds and three ounces when I was born. (sighs) And there she is. Fatty McFatterton's right there. She is. (sighs) All of that to say. When I was a little girl, those were things about me. And you notice on the things about me, there was nothing about Jesus. Because I did not know him. I had heard of him. And if you've been here around here for a while, you've heard me refer this way a lot. But I'm going to always refer this way. I refer to Jesus as the plastic 
Jesus. Did you know they sell these in their stretchy Jesus too? Okay. <clears throat> Jesus was very plastic to me. I knew his name. Um, I had, really didn't know what he did. I didn't know why he was significant. I knew that we referred to him um, as God in a sense, but there was nothing real to me about this Jesus. Um, I didn't know the word at the time, as being a little girl, but it would have been very much a religion. Definitely not like somebody that I could really go and talk to. Now, I did talk to him because I was raised to say my prayers every night. Um, Warner, what did you do with Cuddles? Can you go find him? I need you to go find him. Go look in daddy's office. See, I knew train wreck. Um, see, my Warner, he plays with my stuff. You guys have got to meet Cuddles. My, um, my dad taught me this prayer from a very young age, and it was, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I prayed it every night religiously. And the older I got, the faster I got at it. Now lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Okay, okay, I am covered. And then I would eventually, thank you, Warner, I would eventually tack on the older I got. And when words and actions... I knew were bad, would come out of my mouth. I would say, and please, God, like I would hold cuddles. This is cuddles. He's been with me forever. Um, I would hold cuddles like cuddles was probably more real to me than Jesus. And I would say, Lord, please forgive me for all the bad words and bad things I said and did today. Knowing in my heart, I was going to say the same junk the next day and do the same stuff the next day. But if I died in my sleep, I was good. I was covered. I was covered. My stuffed animal teddy bear, like I would be devastated if he fell off the bed, like I'd hurt him somehow, some way. He was more real to me than Jesus. Jesus was very plastic, might as well have not even been a stuffed animal. But I was covering my bases just in case. He really was real. And just in case my insincere words to him, my routine, my religion would help me get to this heaven, just in case this heaven were real. Just in case. There was nothing of any kind of sincerity. And the older I got, I'd fall asleep halfway through my prayer of asking for forgiveness for everything I had said and done. And then I would tell God to tell hello to all of my family members <laughs> that had died and gone to heaven. Like, it just, I did not understand or grasp who Jesus was. And today I'm wondering if there are people in here that might have felt the way I did growing up. Um, because I didn't know Jesus and I didn't know a purpose and a hope and he was very plastic, I didn't know where I came from. Never once did I think God created me. He created my freckles that I don't like. He created my stick straight hair that I don't like. Never once did I go there. It was just a very empty, sinking, lonely feeling. And I suspect that I'm not alone in ever thinking that. And I suspect I might have some friends among us today that probably feel that way right now. But today, I want to introduce you to this Jesus that I have come to know. This Jesus that I now have a relationship with. He's great. And he's not plastic. And he's not a statue. Like a whole, like, he's not. He's our friend. We can go to him without abandon. I was praying one day and I was saying, Lord, please forgive me just for being just so busy. God, please forgive me that I am not 
plugging in and pressing into you like I should be. And it just hit me. The enemy wants to hold us there and shame the life out of us. Shame on you. You didn't open your word today. Shame on you. You didn't worship today. And in our humanity, we kind of hold on to grudges. Somebody does something to us, we kind of hold on to it. But when we come to the Lord and we say, God, I am so sorry. With a sincere heart, I am so sorry. Help me to be better. Guess what? He does (laughs) right then. He doesn't hold on and say, well, you know, this is the 45th time that you have done this. And I don't know. I'll have to think about it. He's not like us in our humanity. God is a God of love. A plastic Jesus is really easy to live with and to live for. You can say your prayers really fast and be done. Check that off your list. You can show up at church, done. Check it off till next Sunday. Woohoo! But the real Jesus, the one who loves us, the one who died for us, it's not so easy because we owe him everything. And when Paulina went in that water today, she was her, the outside, she was representing old, sinful Paulina. And she went into that water, and when she came back up, God saw her completely different. If we could see through God-colored glasses, he saw her as white as snow. No sin that she had ever done was before him right then. And guess what? My sweet Paulina is going to mess up again and again and again because we all do. But she goes to her Lord, and she says, I'm sorry. Help me. Help me to constantly be a disciple. When she gets baptized, it's not just like, done, yes. No, it's a constant pursuit of the one who saved us and redeemed us and gives us hope. And we're going to talk about this today. The plastic Jesus exists to meet my desires. Hello, prosperity gospel. Jesus, I need some more money. Woo! some more money, Lord. I believe it. I am, name it, claim it, that car is going to be mine in Jesus' name. (laughs) Listen, he wants good things for us. The Bible talks about that. He wants good things for us. But more than good things that he wants for us, he wants a relationship with us. And a relationship is not one-sided. Anybody ever been in a one-sided relationship? How'd that work out? Bad. Thank you. That doesn't, it doesn't work out. It's not a relationship. It's bad. Okay, so here we go. We're going to dig in. Let's talk about the the vision of the Springs Church because today we're talking about we are the church. So where are you going with this, Ashley? So in the vision that God gave us for this church, the first thing that we want when people come in and out of here each week is to know God. Kiddos, notes are coming up. So get your little yellow papers. And I made a, what is that thing? A crossword puzzle for you today. Yeah, it's fun at church. Yes, it's fun at church. Yes, yes, Miss Ashley, it's fun at church. Okay, so here's the good news. God is not plastic. He is very real. He's not a statue that you see when you walk through the grocery store or when you Google Jesus and you might see a statue. He's not. He is very real. He wants a relationship with you and not a religion. And a relationship only works when we know someone. And when you know someone, you have a knowledge and an understanding of who they are, what makes them happy, what makes them sad. Kids, what makes your parents mad? Kids, you know when your parents tell you to brush your teeth and you don't, you know that makes them bad. Just brush your teeth. Yeah, that's right. Clean your room. Mosley boys, are you listening? Yes, mom, we're listening. See, he's listening. Okay, let's look at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, you, 
you, you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp. Everybody do that. Grasp. To grasp. It means to take hold of. To grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know. Everybody say no. No. Know this love that surpasses even our knowledge. It means to know this love not here just in head knowledge. I know God loves me. But it means to know it here in our spirit. That's where we should know this love. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. It is to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, throughout all the generations, to him be the glory forever and ever. So parents, I just want to applaud you right now for getting your babies to church. They may not want to come. Sometimes my don't. They are born and raised teething on church pews. I don't care. You're going to church. You are going to hear about Jesus. Because I know what it's like out there. And I don't ever want my babies to not be equipped out in that real world. They may not like it. Well, they love church. But I know that, you know, they're getting older. They may be like, oh, Mom, do I have to? Yes, you do. I am not in this business of just making their life nice and fluffy. I am their parent. I am in charge right now. When they turn 18, I love you. If you want to move out, you got to get yourself some insurance and a job and all these things. But if you want to move out, you can go. But I know that Brian and I have equipped them along with our brothers and sisters in Christ that link arms with us and help us raise these guys to be men of God. And I just want to speak right now to you men in this room. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being a man after God's own heart. Thank you for showing these kids in here what it's like to be a real man. Thank you for loving the Lord. Thank you for worshiping because this culture that we live in, too many boys and girls are without a dad and too many of them are watching men do just absolutely ridiculous things. So thank you for being, I consider you the men. So thank you for being. I'm about to skip over. I'm getting so excited. Okay. Your knowledge of someone leads you to know their character. The character of God is the opposite of what the world is saying God's character is. The world is trying to deface him. The world is trying to say that he is not love that he is not accepting, and that his people are not loving and accepting. But that's rubbish, because I know what the Word of God says. And kiddos, you need to know what the Word of God says. Adults, you need to know what the Word of God says. Kids, do not ride on the coattails of your parents' faith. That means don't just love God because your parents do. You need to know him for yourself. Adults, I love you. I hope you love me. Don't ride on the coattails of somebody else's faith. Don't let Sunday morning just be a, I did it. I got to church. No, this is a time to come together and enjoy learning about the Lord together in community, knowing you're not alone. But Monday morning, you need to open that word. Monday afternoon, Monday evening, don't coast until next week. You're running on empty when you do that. And you need to know God's character. You need to know who God is because like we said, you go out these doors and the world's going to tell you something different. You need to know, here's your ABCs of God's character. A, God is almighty. B, he is beautiful. C, he is our creator. D, he is your defender. E, he is eternal. F, God is faithful. G, he is good. H, he is holy. 
I, he is immortal. J, God is a just God. K, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. L, God is love. Don't let the world redefine love for you. God is love. That's the definition of love. M, God is merciful. N, God is near to you. O, God is our overseer. And P, he is our protector. Q, God is quick. R, God is our redeemer. S, he is your salvation. T, God is your truth. You, God is unchanging. The same God back in the day of Moses is the same God today. The methods may change. We may be up here with crazy floats on the stage to share some kind of message, but God does not change. The message is the same. V, God is victorious. If you're looking at Am I going to win and be victorious in this? Yes, you are, because God is victorious and God is yours. W, God is wise. X, stretching it, God is exalted. Y, he is Yahweh. And Z, he is zealous for you. Zealous means he is jealous for you. God wants you. God wants to spend time with you. And Conviction for myself when my phone and like searching for the end of the internet on my phone is leading me to emptiness and it's leading me to not feel whole and it's leading me to feeling crummy on the inside. Kids, when your video games are calling you and you've got to go because they're calling you, God is zealous. He is jealous for you and time with you. The second thing for the vision and mission of this church is for you to find freedom. I have a name. Kiddos, there's two slots for this one. I have a name and an identity in Christ. You have a name. You have an identity. Finding freedom can be so hard in this world because this world is shouting things at you that are absolutely untrue. It's barking things on TV. It's barking things when you walk into a store that are not true. Kids, those of you that are in school, you are being told things by other kids that are not true. Don't let them define you. Don't let them tell you that you're not good enough. Don't let them tell you that your freckles are ugly. Don't make, let them cause you to second guess yourself. Kids, you are a child of God. And adults, I know that you hear me too because I know that you feel the same thing when you walk into your workplace sometimes. I know you feel the same thing when you hear things on TV. I know you feel the same things because I do too at 38 years old. And I have to remember, what does this say about me? Who cares what the world is saying? The enemy wants us to. The enemy wants us to care. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy by the world telling us things that we are not. Guys, God made us. He made us male and he made us female. And I might be stepping on some some eggshells there, but this tells me that. And then when the world is telling me that I don't love because I'm not so sure that he made them male and female, I have to go back here every single time. You have a problem with me believing that, then you have a problem with this. And I'm sorry, but this is my truth. This is what I stand on, and this is what's giving me hope. Boys and girls, don't let your friends confuse you. They're going to be telling you some things you know. Boys, God made you a boy, and girls, God made you a girl. Hallelujah. Celebrate in that. Don't be confused by your identity because of what the world is saying. You stand firm on your identity with who God says that you are. I love that song, um, Good, Good Father. And um, in the, one, some of the lyrics in the song say, I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. If nothing else, if you're having a day and you're like, I don't know who I am, then you just say, I am loved by God. (laughs) There's no better thing to be than be loved by God. In your bulletin today, you got a name tag. You can use that name tag as a bookmark. 
You can use that name tag to put it. Some of you have already put it on. I love it. It helps me to remember your name. Um, Or you can use that name tag today to tell yourself and remind yourself who you are in Christ. And I'm going to speak to our words for just a minute, if I may. I am so glad to have the kids and adults in here today. Let's speak about your name. And let's speak about the words that come out of your mouth. Ephesians 4.29 says this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to, according to their needs, that it may benefit all who listen. You may be called stupid. You may be called dumb. An idiot. Or some other names that I won't share within the context of these four walls. And you may have said those things to people as well. But let me tell you, our words are like toothpaste. Here's our mouth. Your words are toothpaste. And when you start spouting off things, using unwholesome language, cussing, calling people names, letting just unwholesome talk, that's not edifying and building up of others of the kingdom of God come out of your mouth. Once it comes out, it's out, friends. I cannot get all of this toothpaste back into this tube. What's said is said. You know, and we say things, and we need to make it right, and we need to apologize. But we also need to think before we open our mouth. And kids, I want to speak to you for a minute, brothers and sisters, friends, kids that go to school. You have heard people call you names. I hear it in my house. We're preaching this at home. Your words hurt. Well, I'm just kidding. Guess what? The hurtful words that you already said trump the just kidding that you say to cover it up afterwards. Can I just call it what it is? I'm just kidding. No, you said them, you said them out of anger. You said them out of dislike. You said them out of defense. God is your defender. Somebody hurts you, you need to take it to the Lord and you need to take them to the Lord. He'll defend you, I guarantee it. Somebody's gonna come back to you and apologize to you because better God handle them than you. So kids, when you're screaming off and you're spouting at your siblings or people at school that you don't like, think about it. I can't get this back. And the word of God says in Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power to bring life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. What is your tongue? What are you saying out of your mouth? Are you giving words that edify and build people up? Because if you are, I want to be around you. If you're getting, giving cutting words and you're tearing people down, I'm sorry. I don't want to hang out with you. Because that hurts me and it hurts my heart. And it makes me start thinking I'm less than who I should be. And if we are walking with Christ, what's coming out of our mouth in here and when we're in the grocery store, And when we're in the hot car without AC and the Las Vegas traffic. Is it going to lead somebody to Christ? Or are they going to be like, oh, they've got a Springs Church Discover Life sticker on the back of their car. And they just told me some things through their body language that doesn't really say that. So I don't think I want to discover that Christ they're talking about. Your words matter. In finding freedom and knowing who you are, if you're dealing with people who aren't Christians and they're telling you things that aren't true, you go right here. If you are dealing with people who are Christians and they're not telling you good things, you go right here to find freedom. And you also get plugged into a life group of other people who are believers 
that are going to get to know you and encourage you through the the bad days, who are going to celebrate that your babies are moving all the way from Saipan back to Las Vegas. Miss Lori, we're so excited. It's because I know her. I know her heart because we've spent time together, and I know the tears she's cried for her family that lives a million years away in Saipan. And so today I got to scream and shout and rejoice with her because they're coming home. There is no more beautiful place to be than to link arms with people and to find freedom and be loved for who you are, warts and all, and people that won't just let you stay there in the warts but who will encourage you and spur you along to be better and be disciples of Christ. Who are you? You are a child of God. You are the friend of Jesus. You are a whole new person with a whole new life. You are a place where God's spirit lives. You are God's incredible work of art. You are totally and completely forgiven. You are created in God's likeness. You are spiritually alive. So when the world is telling you different, you go back to who you are in Christ. You are a citizen of heaven. You are God's messenger to this world. You are God's disciple maker, every single one of you. You are the salt of the earth. Kids, if you've got your glow sticks, now's your time. You are the light of the world and let your light shine. I love my friend Jessica. She's not a kid but she's a kid at heart. She's like, let your light shine. Yes, let your light shine. And you are greatly loved. Get plugged into a life group. Get to church. Be around the body of Christ. Come and hang out with us on July 20th. We're going to roast some marshmallows. Warner Jude is so happy about making s'mores on that day for the church cookout. I went to a funeral this week. Um, of my dear friend's grandmother. And this lady, uh, Miss Arliss, loved Jesus. And after going to this funeral, I'm like, um, when I go to meet Jesus, I want my funeral like that. It's a celebration. And her leg, I didn't know the lady, but like, I want, I would, I would want to because she loved Jesus. And that's what everybody that stood up there and talked about her said. This coolest thing The coolest thing is that our list had a posse. How old was she? 80? 88. She had a posse. (laughs) This is Arliss's posse. They had on pink shirts that said Arliss's posse at her funeral. Talk about celebrating. They sat on the front row. They were there for their girl because they know they're going to meet her again in heaven. And they were there just (laughs) supporting and rejoicing. And they didn't dress up in black clothes. Uh Uh-uh. We are Arliss's posse through thick and thin. And when we get to heaven, we are going to be rejoicing. That is being known, friends. (laughs) That That is being known. She hung out with these ladies for I don't even know how many years. But it was amazing. When I go to be with Jesus, and y'all come to my funeral, I want you in yellow shirts, because yellow is my favorite color, Ashley's posse, um, and celebrate celebrate. I want people to walk away from my funeral like people walked away from Arliss's funeral knowing I need friends that know me and I'm known and um, I need to know Jesus. That's what I need to know. Okay, discover your purpose. I need to get, I need to get grooving here. Okay, discover your purpose. Number three, you were born with a purpose. You were just like this pencil has a purpose. Children, you're out of school for the summer, but (laughs) when you go back to school, this pencil has a purpose. It's to write things. Now, don't let's look at the pencil as a whole, but each part of the pencil has a purpose. The wood is for holding. The lead is for writing. It has its purpose. The little metal thing is to keep that eraser on there to erase when you have the mistakes. Every part of that pencil has a purpose. You have a purpose. Hold on. I've got more things. Hallelujah. Children, the toothbrush has a purpose for you to keep your teeth And so that paint doesn't peel off the wall when you breathe on it. And you can talk to people. A toothbrush has a purpose. (laughs) 
Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Hey, who's referred to this as the potty? Who's referred to this as the potty? Who, is, who has 12-year-old children and still says, do you need to go to the potty? Okay. Sorry, Garrison, it's just me. Okay, did you know that in medieval times, potty is where the name came from because people would really go to the bathroom in a pot and then throw it out the window? That is gross. <laughs> Thank God. God, that somebody came up with the royal throne, the golden throne, the loo, whatever you want to call it, it's got a purpose. And I'm appreciative of its purpose, even if it's a nasty one. It's got a good purpose. And if you live in a house full of boys, it's a very nasty one. But thank God my house does not smell of other things. Okay. Scissors. Think about it. The scissors have a purpose. But I, again, I want you to look past the scissors. The blades have a purpose. The blades would not work and would not do their job if it weren't for the handles. You got to hold on to something. And the, most, the, the thing, the purpose on here that's most overlooked in a pair of scissors is right there in the middle. That little bitty screw holding it all together, often unseen, never thanked. Thank you, screw, for holding the scissors together so I can cut this piece of paper. Try to cut something without it, and you will know, you'll know. It's true. It might be very insignificant to us, but it's uber important. Let's look at the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? Imagine us walking around as one big foot, one big nose, one big appendix. appendix. Okay. Um, as it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. <laughs> the screw on the scissors. We need it. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. Thank you, Jesus. And while our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. Now, let's stop thinking about body parts right now, and let's start thinking about this church. Let's start thinking about our local church right here, and let's start thinking about the big C, the church in general. We are all part of the body. We all should not be doing the same thing. We all have our gifts and we all have our parts. And the people that scrub the toilets are just as important as the people that stand up here and lead us in worship each week. I'm thankful every time I walk in there to clean bathrooms. You can come to my house too. I would love it. Okay. Look at this, verse 25. This is something near and dear to my heart. So that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and divide, and he wants to divide the church, and he wants to cause dissension here. But we've got to rise up against him and not let him win in that. But we need to celebrate each other and our gifts and say, I need you. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. Do all, the gifts, do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire greater gifts. 
We all have our gifts that the Lord has given us, and we can desire even more and greater gifts. But let's do the gift that God has given us. So not sure what your purpose is? It's okay. Keep coming to church. Get plugged in a life group. And in September, on September 5th, I think it is, come to life group. We will help you discover your purpose, and we will pray with you. Last but not least, make a difference. Okay. I've got my giant lip balm. We live in the desert. It's very dry. This makes a difference. It's SPF 15. Somebody tell Holly. Um, It's an inside joke. I'm kidding, Holly. I love you. Okay. And my friend this morning was like, you know what? If we would just drink the adequate amount of water that we need, we would need this. Truthbomb.com. So let's drink our water. We We live in the desert. But Until then, we need our chapstick until it works. But make a difference like this Sharpie. Parents, have you experienced a Sharpie in your house? Yes! On the walls! On the wood furniture! Guys, one of my children, I won't name names, took a rock one day to my van and drew pictures. He loves art. (laughs) And I love him. (sighs) And he knows that rocks and paint on the van don't mix anymore. But we've had lovely pictures drawn all over our walls. Thank God for a magic eraser because it really isn't permanent. But let's just pretend that it's going to stay there forever and ever and ever. Make a lasting difference. Make a lasting difference with your life. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 says, So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here, Paulina. Yes. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Here's what he's told us to do. We are therefore God's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. God wants us to use his Sharpie marker on the world. He wants us to make a difference with whatever your gift is, singing, cleaning toilets, putting out signs, handing out waters, telling people about Jesus. Don't sit on it. Don't keep the cap on the permanent marker and not use it. Use it and make a permanent difference. Woo, for Jesus. My thing, I'm getting so excited. My thing is, whatever this thing is called. Here we go. We are called to make a difference in the world. It's on there. Our sweet Irv that Rory talked about earlier. The first time I met him, he's standing at that door, holding that door open. He was the best door opener on the face of the planet. He met you with a smile and you left with a smile. If you were having a crummy day, Somehow, Jesus through Irv, you weren't having such a crummy day when you saw him. And he said to me, hey, girl, how you doing? Hey, girl, man, when I get to heaven, Irv's going to be standing there. I'm pretty sure, like, he's going to be standing there, like, at the gates welcoming people. Hey, girl, what took you so long? He made a difference. Gosh. All it required him was getting up and coming to church and putting a smile on. He was here when he was sick. He'd sit right there in that chair, and his sweet little face was swollen, and I'd walk up to him, and I'm like, hey, Irv, it's so good to see you. He's like, hey, girl. I love that man. He made a difference, and he showed up when he could. It was amazing. How can we make a difference? Number one, okay, let's review real quick. Application, make church attendance a priority. Get into a life group. Study your Bible. Kids, Bible study. That's on your notes. Start somewhere. Don't be like, oh, I got to go in my prayer closet for three hours. Give it five minutes. And the more that you are in the word of God, the more you're going to want to be in the word of God. Because the more you're going to know God and know who he is and know who you are. Find freedom. 
I will speak words of life to others and I will receive words of life from the word of God. Number three, discover your purpose. I will believe that I have a purpose and I'm going to put it into practice. I'm not going to sit on it. I'm going to put it into practice. And number four, make a difference. I will actively use my gifts to serve the Lord. And I just want to take a moment, just a brief moment, because it's time for us to go home (laughs) or lunch or whatever. (laughs) I want to take a moment to just say again, because I don't ever, ever want to ever take it for granted When Brian and I and the boys moved here five years ago and we knew no one and we're going to start a church and we don't really know how to do that. If you are serving on the dream team and you are showing up on the weekends to clean the church and you're coming through the week to do worship practice and you're standing here, you get here early, you stay late, you do all the things. I know you are not doing it for Brian and me. I know that you are doing it for Jesus. And I just want you to look around right now at this beautiful congregation of people that we have and this beautiful family that we have. And When we love Jesus, it's contagious, so we take it out of these four walls and we go out into the world and we make a difference out in the world. When we first met in a bowling alley, we had like five people there, and I'm looking out in a sanctuary full of people today, and I'm like, yes, Jesus, you are making a difference in Sin City. There are real people and real families that want to know you and crave you and desire you and want to experience a life of freedom. So dream team, right now, I honor you. Brian and I honor you in everything that you do. Everything you do to make a difference. Because guess what? You're not sitting on it. Well, you're not sitting on that either, but you're not leaving the cap on your Sharpie. You choose in whatever way that you're serving to take that cap off your Sharpie, and you're choosing to show up, even when you're tired, even like Irv when he was sick. All it is is showing up, putting a smile on, and just saying, Jesus, I am here, and I am your hands, and I am your feet, and use me. If you want to be a part of that and you say, you know what, it's time. It's time. I want to do something. I am not put on this earth just to exist. There will be prayer team members standing up here after service. Brian and I will be available. Pastor Adam and Julie will be available. Pastor Rory will be available. Come and talk to us. You don't have to wait till September for growth track to start back. We'll help you faster. Okay? And before we leave... I know I keep saying it. it's probably fifth time that I've said it. I just want to give anybody the opportunity that if you do not know Jesus, today is save you your day. You don't have to change anything. Like you don't have to go out of here and be like, I need to think about it. No, if you're like, I feel it. I feel like what she's talking about. I have felt that emptiness and I don't want to be empty. I want to know this real Jesus that I can have a relationship with. Here's your, here's your time and your opportunity. I just want everybody to close your eyes and bow your head. And let's just, let's pray this together. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for my life. I thank you that you died for me. I am a sinner. And you are God. And Lord, I know that you can save me. And I confess with my mouth that you are the Lord Jesus, that you died for my sins, and that you've washed me as white as snow. Lord, help me to get plugged into your word, to worship, and to prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, church family, let's welcome them. We don't know who they are, but I'm believing that somebody today...